All right, guys, welcome back. So today I want to talk again about LLM and R, uh, but this is going to be one of my last videos on the topic because I've kind of been beating it into the ground, I think. Um, but I wanted to make a video. I figured the series wouldn't be complete until I show you guys how to actually mitigate and patch this vulnerability that comes default in Windows, um, especially in Active Directory environments. It's a super easy patch um, and figured I'd show that today. So if you want to learn how to remove LLM and R from your network, then you're in the right place. Okay, so check it out. I'm not going to go into detail about how to perform the attack or what I'm doing. Uh, I'm just going to do a quick demonstration showing that before we do anything, the vulnerability is present in the environment. And if you um, if you're unsure or you don't recognize what I'm doing here, go check out part one of my video. But basically, if I were to just come into this victim machine and type in uh, a file share that doesn't exist, we'll notice we're getting some activity here. And check that out. We've got three <laughs> three instances, four now five. It's just going to keep going. Um, instances of the hash for that logged in user k-irving, right? And this is all because of the LLM and R that the machine broadcasted on the network. We're able to respond to that request, capture the hash, right? We've talked about this before. Um, so what I wanna show now is just how easy it is to actually fix this. If you're an IT admin and you haven't fixed this yet, go check your network. It's probably present and you should make the you should make this quick GPO that we're gonna do. So let's head over to our domain controller and we'll take a look. So here we are over on my domain controller, um, and all we're going to do is make a quick and easy group policy object. So to do that, you come into the start menu and you can come into the administrative tools and you can find the group policy management inside of that. I've got it right here in my start menu. You could also just search for it if you needed to, um, but we'll just go ahead and pull that open. And I'm actually working in an environment that doesn't have any GPOs created at the moment because it's just a demo lab thing that I don't really do a lot with. Um, but you may have multiple GPOs here in your environment depending on what all you do with Active Directory. Um, you could come in here and edit your default domain policy, but I always like to go ahead and just create a new GPO. Uh, that way it's easier for me to modify down the road or disable, enable, or do what I need to. So I'm just gonna call this one uh, disabling LLM and R. And then we can go into this guy and we can actually come in and edit it. And what we're looking for, I'll make this big, we'll come into policies, administrative, network, and then there's DNS client in here. And then this guy, turn off the multicast name resolution. Uh, by the way, I've got a blog post up, I'll link it in the description. So if you can't remember that path, you can just reference that if you'd like to. Uh, but this is all we're looking for. And you can see it's talking here about LLM and R. And by default, it is not configured. But we can set this to enable to turn off multicast name resolution. So I'm going to say OK, apply and OK. And then we're done. <laughs> now, I mean, we do have to wait a minute, right, for group policy to go ahead and, and push out. Um, we can update it right away on this machine by doing a GP update slash force. And we'll come into this guy. This is, uh, I believe, the computer I used as an example earlier. We'll do the same thing here, GP update slash force. And that's just going to query the domain controller, pull down any of the new GPOs, and actually get that policy applied here. So give it a second. It shouldn't take too long for it to finish up. Cool. So now it says that the policy is applied and we can put it to the test. So I'm going to close this. We'll move my domain controller out of the way. Let's bring our attack machine back into the picture, which I've got here somewhere. Here we are. So there's Responder. I'm going to go in and start running it. The punch in like password there. And now we can head over to this machine. And remember, like earlier in the video, all I did was come in and I said fake, pressed enter. And we got LLM and R requests that came. And let's see what happens this time. Son of a. 
No, so this is actually expected, and that's because LLMNR is only one piece of the puzzle here. You can see this time we're not getting LLMNR poison answers, we're getting NBT and S poison answers. So what's happening now is LLMNR is no longer in the picture, but we still have NetBIOS in the picture that's still broadcasting and, and just trusting anybody who says, yeah, I'm who you're looking for. So to actually disable that, it's a little bit more difficult because there's not a way to do it over a GPO. Um, but but there is a registry hack that you can use, which means you'll also be able to use um, like PowerShell or command line to make this uh, a fix that you kind of deploy on a, at a mass scale if you have a lot of machines to manage. Um, but the, the part in the registry that we're looking for is under local machine system, current control set services, net BT parameters, interfaces, whew, and then we finally get to uh, the, the different network adapters that are listed here. So these are representing each one of your network adapters you have on your machine. Um, and the setting that we want to change is this NetBIOS options. At, by default, it's going to be set to zero, which is enabling NetBIOS. But we'll want to turn that off on the network. Um, so to do that, you can come in here, modify this, and set this value to two. Now, again, if you want to automate this kind of at a larger scale, you can do that by opening up PowerShell. And then there's this PowerShell, it's not really a script as much as it's just like a couple commands. Um, but if we run these two, and I'll move this over a bit, if I run these two, what we did here is we just set the registry hive to be, or the registry key to be exactly that same path I just mentioned. But then we're just getting the different interfaces here. And then for each one of those, we're setting the NetBIOS option with a value of two. And then because we have the verbose flag, we got all this output saying, yeah, it worked. And we can just come in here and just click into one of these. Yep, and we can see now they each have a value of two as I kind of hit the arrow keys up and down. So that won't take effect. We actually come into the network interface and disable it and re-enable it. You could also do this by restarting the machine, right? So if you're taking care of this again at like a large scale, you'll probably want to use your RMM tool to run those commands and then set the machines to reboot overnight or something like that. And when they come back to life, they should no longer be vulnerable to these attacks. And we could test this, close out of all this stuff, come back to responder. I'm just going to clear the screen. We'll rerun this guy just so that way it's nice and clean. And now if I were to come in and try to do fake, Right away, we get a, hey, we can't access fake, and we get no responses here for the responder tool. So that's it. That's how you disable this in your environment the correct way. Uh, again, I'll have a blog post. I'll link it in the description. It'll have the PowerShell commands I just ran, as well as the location for that GPO that you'll want to configure. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Otherwise, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks.